There you go. Oh! I feel like I could twirl around with the seal. Yeah, you probably could. Today is the day, guys. <laughs> I am here with 12-time Olympic medalist, Ryan Locke. So if you fell off a boat in the ocean, could you survive? No. This past summer, I was surrounded by water and it was nothing I could do. You know what I mean? And I don't think it's ever too late when you can learn. No, it's never too late. And my love and passion for the water, it's like my happy place. See, I want my happy place in the water, so. Hey, we're gonna make your happy place okay. in the water. I'm gonna hold you to it now, Ryan. Oh, I got you. I know you got me, I ain't worried about that. <laughs> Y'all ready to see me learn? I'm taking this real serious. Y'all see what I'm working with? What? Did I put on the right thing? Uh-oh, you ready, ready? I'm ready, too. Here we go. <laughs> Can I get some lifeguards? How about some lifeguards? Oh. <laughs> Walter's a lifeguard? Okay. He can swim a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> hey, friend. Yay! I guess I'm ready now. I have my lifeguards. First things first, I want you to start falling in love with the water. Get comfortable with it. Blow some bubbles. Put my nose and my mouth in the water to blow it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now kick. Yep. Just like that. And then kick a little faster. Oh, yeah. See? Good job. I'm tired. You're tired? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> my baby gonna be so proud of me. He said, Mom, yeah. be careful because he can swim. Okay. Hey, by the I'm summer, gonna like hey, that. you're gonna be swimming with your kids. Okay. They're gonna be like, Mom, come on. And you're okay. like, oh, I got you. Teaching people how to swim is like what I wanna do. And it doesn't matter what age you are, anyone can learn how to swim. Are you really good at watching something and then you mimicking it? Yeah. All right, ready? Just keep your arms moving, don't stop kicking. But I want your face underwater. Now we could put it all together and you can try it. Do you have goggles? I do. Should I put them on? I feel like it's oh. taking my eyeballs. Jesus. <laughs> Uh, no, about that. There. It's supposed to be like that. No, it wasn't. Yeah! Breathe. There you go. Yep. Keep going. <laughs> I'm going to the Olympics! Woo! <laughs> yeah, no, hey, that was good. Woo! So now, I think this is too short. I think we might have oh, to go. <laughs> but see, I feel confident here. I don't know if I can take my confidence hey, this but, way. Hey, don't, don't look down there. Okay. So we're gonna go inch by inch. So you're gonna go start from this wall. Uh-huh. And you're gonna swim until to me. Keep going, yep. Oh you're, you're, uh, you're holding your breath. Yes. But you have to learn how to breathe. Oh, she's gonna, she's not gonna like me after this. Yep, there you go. Keep going. Yep. That's where I try to land, right? <laughs> oh, oh, hey, hey! Yep! <laughs> what? One more time, one more time. Let me start again. <laughs> Lifeguards, get ready. You awake, friend? I'm awake. Because I know you're not off from time to time. <laughs> hey, you know how far this is? It's probably like 40 yards. Oh, okay. Here I come. Yep, there you go, there you go. Yep, hey, you got this. You're doing so good, go. Keep going, keep going. I'm gonna give up now, right? No, 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 you got this. Use your arms, grab that water, grab that water. There you go, there you go, almost there. Grab that wall, grab that wall. Yes! I did it! Yes, yes! look! I did it! Did you see that? <laughs> you overcome your fear. You wanted to give up, but you kept pushing. That is a perfect lesson that you can use even in life. You just kicked ass! Did I? <laughs> what? Ryan, I can't feel the ground. No, you can't. You're in deep water. Hey, oh. okay, okay, let's do this. And I'm going all the way to the other end. Yep. Because you're a swimmer. Ryan said I can, I can. You can. Here we go. So whenever you're ready, push off. I'm ready. There you go. 
Big arc, yep, keep kicking. We're doing good, we're doing great. All right, keep going, keep those legs moving. Big arms, big arms, we're half witch. Keep going, keep going. Yep. Yes! Great. There you go, great, yep. Yep. Ah yes! Denver Hudson is officially a swimmer. Watch out guys, 2028 Olympics. Jennifer, here she comes. Give me my battle. Yeah. I heard you tied John Legend how to swim too. Yes. Okay, yes. who's better though? Me or John? I love you, John, but you know. So, so John Legend, it was a couple of years ago, his pool was shorter. Okay. You out swam him by a lot. I did. By a lot. See, he had a little, he had a little tidy pool. You would have done laps around him. You hear that? On my first try, right? Yes. Yeah. Ryan, I have to say, all I need was a little bit of encouragement, but you were such an awesome teacher. You gave me the confidence and the courage to try it, and I knew I was in good hands, so I was like, Ch -ch -ch -ch, let me try. You did it, you did you know? it, yes. I had the best time. You know what, I want to ask you, would you like, because I'm so appreciative of you helping me out, so would you like to learn how to sing? Ooh. Uh, no, 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 and doing flag football, uh, I'll be like a fish out of the water. So I got to put these fins to, to the test. Ooh, that makes you nervous, huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't want to mess up. See, you'll be all right. If you sing a song and your spirit, it calm you down and you'll yeah. be okay. All right. We'll <laughs> but be good okay. luck with that. Yeah. And congratulations yeah. on that. Thank you. As well. Okay, tell us, when did you first start swimming? I first started, so growing up in New York, uh, my parents were both swim coaches. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was always around, I was always around the pool deck, but I couldn't say, hey mom, hey dad, like what's for swim practice today? There, it was coach. Oh. And then as soon as we left the pool deck, it was mom and dad. We never talked about swimming, so we had two different lifestyles. So I think that's what really helped me moving on throughout my swimming career. Um, and I just kind of fell into the sport. The love and passion I have for the water, just, it was my happy place. I love that. It was your happy place and kind of fell into the water, you're modest. All you've achieved with it is insane. Okay, now the Paris Olympic is, Olympics is coming up and you want to be a commentator for it? Oh, yes, I would love to okay. be a commentator for the Olympics. Uh, oh, go and pitch yourself. How would you commentate? Give us an example. Oh, I don't, I, ooh, you put you me know. on the spot. <laughs> Paris, 2024 Olympics. Give it to him. Ryan Lochte's coming to you. <laughs> your family is adorable. Yes. Do your kids know how to swim? Have they learned yet? Uh, my oldest son, he's on the swim team, mm -hmm. but he doesn't really like it so he much. He doesn't like it? No, but he knows, he, lo he wants to just play, uh -huh. play swim, which I'm fine by that. Uh, as long as my kids know how to swim, that's all I really care about. Um, and if, if swimming is what they want to do in a career, then they can pursue that. But um, I'm not pushing them. I'm letting them make their own decisions, but... That's a good approach. You're a good dad, too. Yeah, I try. I try. That's nice. But, yes, yeah, so, uh, there's my boy right there. Oh, man, I'm going to start crying. I love this. Aww. Uh, yeah, so six-year-old boy, four-year-old girl, and a five-month girl. Oh. And yeah. how was she? Oh, she, she loves the water. She loves she the water? She thinks she can swim, but she can't. <laughs> <laughs> So, hey, Daddy's right there, always, <laughs> by the steps, making sure she doesn't go down. <laughs> Just letting her think that she can. Now, your wife, she loves to, like, prank you a lot. I see it on social media. Man. You got to watch your back, huh? I need some help, guys. <laughs> I need to get her back, and I don't know how. She, <laughs> she comes up with all these tricks, all these pranks on me, and I don't know how to get her back. You have never She's gotten her back? She's oh too God. smart. You didn't know that was in there? No, I thought I thought I was really doing a soda test. Yeah. 
It's all over your face right now, I can tell. Yeah, because I got that, like, the soy sauce and red hot going down my <laughs> mouth right still, now. <laughs> you Ugh. can still taste it. Okay, listen, I love your wedding photo. This was, I think this was such a cute idea. Y'all jumped in the pool. Uh, I mean, we, I think that's as so you can see, we, we, didn't, we didn't jump in. I kind of threw her in. Oh, so you did get her back then. I was like, hey, please don't divorce me over <laughs> this right now. Please, please, please. <laughs> how I love she, you. How was she as a swimmer? Oh, she's a phenomenal swimmer. Oh, okay. Oh, she's a phenomenal swimmer. She was a lifeguard growing up, um, so she definitely knows all the strokes and everything. I was like, can you tell me what my world record is in? And she's like, you got a world record. <laughs> yep. I'm like, what, stroke? And she's like, yeah, swimming. <laughs> swimming. I'm like, that's, that's my babe. Yep. Aww. <laughs> Your family sounds amazing, yep. adorable. Yep. The future Olympian is here. Hi. Hi. Is this supposed to feel like this? Um, it's so tight on my ankles. There, it's a little tight on the ankles. That's how it's supposed yeah. to be. Yeah. I am about to, I think, live a childhood dream. I got Tara Lipinski, Olympic gold medalist, to teach me how to like twirl around and skate. Like, but I want to see. Like, what do you I'm... want to learn? Like, what is the dream? To skate like you. Oh. That but, took a couple years, okay. but I okay. mean, we have a couple hours. Okay, but can we at least get comfortable on the ice and stay off the ice, like that yeah. fall? Yeah, like a little overdressed. Do you think we should like pare down just to to oh. get in skating mode? I guess I better. I thought I was dressed right. <laughs> okay. I'm feeling real confident right okay. here. Well, that's good, baby. When I hit that ice, you're gonna be fine. That's oh my god. Fine. Step on out. Oh, Step all the way on. Following. And then you're gonna take the other one. Yep. Oh, hand God. on the board. Oh, yep. Both hands are one. No, one. Oh, I got you one. here. Okay. Okay, we're gonna march. You told me in March. Yep. You're gonna let me go to <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Oh, I yep. feel like a baby learning how to walk. Yep. Now take the other hand. Yep. Yes, yeah, we okay, did nice turn. Yeah, look at the that. Oh. And then maybe what you can do. What can I do now? Is let go. You can kind of keep it there just in case you need it, but maybe you don't need to put your hand down. And I can jump in if oh, I need no. to. Oh, <laughs> yeah. no. Okay, I am, I yeah. am. You're doing it. I am doing it. You're doing it. Are you ready for me to spin around it yet? Not yet, not yet. We're gonna, a few more <laughs> not steps. Not yet, okay. A few more steps. Okay, what we're gonna try to do here is I'm just gonna give you a, like a little... You're gonna push me? Push, oh, okay. Boy. Just so you can feel like what it feels like to glide. Okay, what about when I go dipping back? I shouldn't yeah. dip back. No, well you don't wanna be Tell you a little slightly... come back. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> we're like kind of gliding. Yes. Yeah, we're no longer marching. Oh, I got you. Dip back though, I got like you. a bow, you girl. <laughs> I know. Okay. <laughs> Look yeah, at you cool. gliding. I'm gliding. You're gliding. <laughs> Look how fast you're going. Oh, yep. yeah. That was a scary Mars guy. That was a scary Mars guy, but we got it. Here, yeah. let's first see what this feels like. If yeah, doesn't it feel a little low? I'm a tall girl. There you go. Oh! I feel like I could twirl around with the seal. Yeah, you probably could. Okay, you know what we could try what to. Can we try now? Okay, stand in here. You this might the be. Silhouette? Here, give oh, me here. your hands. Mm-hmm. Out and in. Yep. Out. Out. Ooh, ooh, I'm going to jump. No, you're not. I got you. I got you. So a spin. I know this was the ultimate. Oh no. We're I'm really like now. moving along. Okay. Moving along. But I'm doing okay. You're doing. You're doing. Look, you're in the middle of the rink. I want to think about it. So if you were to stand here, right, like you are, and bend your knees slightly, right, and you wind up like like a top, right? Like this arm goes here. Bend your knees slightly, face forward, right? And then you're just gonna turn. It's gonna feel like this, very slightly. I did it. You did it. So it's like How this. How's supposed to look? So it's like slow. Oh, Tara. I know. <laughs> Can you do it for me? Yeah. Ready? How long did it take you to learn how to do that? <laughs> I don't know. A long time. I mean, I started when I was three, so I was, you know, on the ice you know my I'm whole life. You know, right? I, I, I didn't, but okay. you can start at any age. We're gonna wind up, right? 
And then we're gonna push off a little. Yep. Yep. Look at that. <gasps> Bend and push. Yep. Twist it up. And you're gonna push. Yep. Yeah. Faster. Look at that. Whoa. <laughs> Look at this! Ta-da! You did so well. Did I? Yes, I mean, we started marching mm -hmm. on the boards. You started gliding without my help, without holding on, and then you were in the middle of the rink, mm -hmm. and you were doing turns, and you were skating fast. I'm going to make you proud of okay. me. Okay. I'm already proud. Okay. That was incredible. I appreciate you. You were awesome. Ooh, thank you. I wonder, I'm going to be like you when I grow yes. up. Yes. We're going to do like, we'll get dressed up in a sparkle rhinestone costume and do a duet one day. Okay. I'm going to put my okay. outfit together. Y'all be yep. ready for the next round. I got this. You've been in the public eye since you were a teen. I know, itty baby. A baby, I right? I know, 15 years old is when I won the Olympics, so ages ago. <laughs> ages ago. And you've kept your infertility a secret? I did, we went through a long five-year journey and it was so difficult because we experienced, I experienced so much pregnancy loss along the way and then going through IVF and trying to get back more embryos to try pregnancy again and it really was like this mystery that just never ended and it was so isolating and I felt so alone mm -hmm. and I had all of these feelings that I didn't know if they were normal or if other people were experiencing it because you just don't hear these stories as much. You hear about IVF or infertility, but right. you don't really know what the day-to-day -day life is, especially when it goes on for half a decade. So finally, I just got tired mm -hmm. of keeping it to myself and it felt like a secret, especially when I was doing my day job you know, obviously my right. family and inner circle knew, but not everyone else. And I've been in the public eye and I've shared so much that we eventually just decided, let's, my husband and I self-publish this podcast and mm. said, let's just tell our story and let's talk about all these emotions that come along with this life of trying to build a family. And we did that and we talked about our surrogacy journey because if you listen to the podcast, it, it was like a mystery. Every year there was something. And we finally found the reason why I wasn't able to hold the pregnancies and we used a surrogate with one of our embryos. Mm -hmm. And um, and now we have a baby now girl. Now you have a baby girl. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. I know. A long road, but we have a baby girl. Wow. <laughs> and how old is she now? She is going to be seven weeks. Seven weeks. Yes. Congratulations. I know. She's so precious. That I can't is believe beautiful. it. It really is. It's shocking. Every day I wake up and it's just this surreal feeling that it actually happened. It's happened <laughs> and you deserve it. Aww. Um, Georgie is her name, Georgie. right? Georgie Winter. Georgie Winter. Yes. Do you think she'll um, get into ice skating like a mom? So, you know, people ask me this, but I feel like that's a lot of pressure. No, I, can I, I feel like that's a lot. So mm. maybe I'll take her to the rink. And then if she wants to skate, I guess I'll have to skate with her. But hopefully she finds something of her, her own that doesn't have to follow right. in mom's footsteps. Her Halloween <laughs> costume was awful, awful cute. Can right. we see it? <laughs> Well, that was, oh, that was her newborn that's photo. That's newborn photo. I know. See, I'm like, oh, she's not going to skate, but we have her in skates. And we <laughs> <laughs> but then for Halloween, we, it, was, it was incredible. There she One is. of my friends in the skating world made a duplicate outfit. Brad Yes. I don't know. Yes. This is so precious. I'm is so happy so for cute? you. I'm so happy for you. As you see, I am here with Johnny. My friend, Walter Disney, he over here chilling. It's but okay. can we run him over with the skis when we come down? That's all. Yeah, we'll, we'll spray him. All right, let's get your boots on. Okay. Cool. There's a lot to learn in skiing, but we'll just take it slow. Whoa, look at those nails. You've never seen a, a skier like this. Jennifer Hudson, you gotta have some style, right? Gotta you don't have wanna. A swag. Exactly. I am in there. I feel like I'm about to glide already. We're 90% of the battle right there. What I'm gonna teach you to do first is walk around on this little flat area right here. There you go. That's, oh, that's really good. Keep it in a duck, though. Keep it in a duck. Oh, I'm skiing now. That's really good. You exactly. see me, friend? Put your skis parallel. Keep them together. Stand up tall. Perfect. Keep, try to keep them parallel. Good. Don't let me go over the cliff, Jim. I got you. I got you. All right, cool. There you go. That's a good straight line. How you doing? Well, long as I get away from that cliff, I'm all right. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, 
Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Don't worry, there's a lot of <laughs> in skiing. Come on, get the lead out. <laughs> I'm going to rip the fall line. Yeah. <laughs> Walt is having too good of a time. He's asleep. <laughs> Wally! <laughs> Wake up! Hey, baby, Wally. you doing good. <laughs> <laughs> this is called the snowplow. Heels out. Yep. That's how you're going to slow down. Okay. Go ahead. Uh-huh. There you go. Yeah, exactly. French fry. Now it's push snowplow. Snowplow. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and I'm going again. Oh. Uh... <laughs> okay, snowplow. Snowplow. There you go. That's a snowplow. When we get up there, you're really going to have to, if you want to slow down, you're really going to have to. Okay. All right, one more snowplow session, and then I'll get you with the bamboo. What's the bamboo? I'm going to hold you just like this. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Tips in, heels out. Good. There you go. Yes. It's like a dance. Ready? Uh. Mm. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> just go. All right, let's ditch your poles for right now. Ditch them? Yeah. Give them there. Do, you, do you like them? Do you feel like I'm you need them? I'm ditching my poles. Good. Perfect. Stand up tall. Good. There you go. You feel it kind of turning once you stand on it? Yep. Now stand on the right ski. Yep, stand on it. Don't lean. Don't. Yeah, there you go. Don't. No. Yep, there you go. Perfect. Now snowplow to stop. Now a little snowplow. Push the heels up. Bam! <laughs> yeah, I think you're ready for the uh, a little bit steeper. You ready for that? Mm, no. <laughs> we gonna find out. Yeah, where are no. we going, Jenny? Well, we're gonna ride up that little magic carpet on top of the mountain. But I'll be here with you, and we'll and we'll helm it up. Let's do it. Jennifer, this is your big moment. Uh huh. This is your time to shine. I'm gonna I'm gonna make you proud. Well, yeah, I know you are. We're going for gold, right? Yes. Okay. Bam! Look at that mountain. We're gonna attack that thing. We're gonna attack it. <laughs> Three, two, one, drop it. Okay, we're gonna go sit there. A little bit of pressure on the right foot. Pressure on the right foot. Let it all the way across the hill. Good, there you go, exactly. A little snow plow, a little snow plow. A little snow plow, you're good. Easy, 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 good, there you go. Perfect, all right, let's, let's head towards, more, more, more pressure on right foot. Don't go down the hill, go across the hill, across the hill. And we're just gonna look, look over there, look to that side. Good, okay, now left ski, stand on the left ski. Good, there you go, stand on that right ski and tilt those knees into the hill. Just a little weight, now when you come across, now tilt the left knee towards me. Oh, that's it, beautiful. Yep, now tilt that knee away from me. Don't forget to turn. Okay, snow plow and finish on your own. I don't know little that. snow plow, you're good, little snow plow. Snow plow, Woo! little snow plow, little snow plow, Ooh. little snow plow. <laughs> yeah. Very good. <laughs> Did you get the feeling? I got the feeling. You helped me get the feeling. Yeah. I always wanted to do this. Yeah. I'm skiing in California. That's this right. The good. ultimate playground. How did I do on the slopes? You don't let them know. Yeah, well, it, it, I'm pleased to announce that Jay Hud is also great at skiing. And yeah! I mean, it, shocker, right? <laughs> I, I've been really impressed, actually, on the hill, because I've known to, been known to be overbearing as a coach. Oh, okay. And so I was giving you a lot of instruction, okay. which you were taking very well, and you never got frustrated, and you okay. just kept digging in, because skiing's not easy to learn, and that was an A, A plus, A plus. Thank you. I got inspired all over again watching that, okay? But you're a great teacher, so I have to give you credit. Well, let's just give just, him just, a just, hand. I, I'll thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay? Now, this is interesting. You were born in Puerto Rico, so how in the world did you get into skiing? Yeah, I mean, my dad's not very forthcoming with the reasons, but <laughs> from what I know, he got to ski a little bit as a kid growing up in California. Uh -huh. um, and then he moved to Puerto Rico as a single guy, started a business down there. Okay. And he met my mom, who's from the east. Oh. And when the business went south, he moved back to Northern California with three, like, rambunctious boys. Mm -hmm. And he was like, we're going to the mountains every weekend. One thing led to another, and my older brother kind of got us into freestyle skiing. M oh. The middle brother was, yeah. How fast is that? This is you? That's me. How yeah, old were you like, here? I'm like three and a half or four years old. Really? That's when I first started, yeah. Look at that. That yeah. is amazing. And then my other brother kind of got me to the next level, mm -hmm. and then when he got to the World Cup level and stuff like that, he coached me all the way to that level, but then he had injuries and kind of exited, but that kind of got me to the next level. Okay, so I didn't know there were different types of skiing. So mm -hmm. what's your favorite type of skiing? Well, as a kid, I loved the tricks and the jumps and, uh -huh. and you know, just all that stuff. And that's kind of what led me down that, that path uh, to get into freestyle skiing, which was kind freestyle of a burgeoning skiing. new 
new sport. Um, and, you know, I still love to do a lot of that stuff now. Well, can you but I, I kind of, as I get older, I kind of like the cruising now, you know. Oh, so you uh, cruise now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, you know. What's, what is freestyle skiing, Jenny? So freestyle skiing, so you've seen uh, racing, right? That's kind of when you go around the gates and it's timed. And that's like what the traditional style of skiing is, right? You see Michaela okay. Schiffer and all those guys. Almost everything else I would consider freestyle skiing. Mm. So, you know, the tricks, the jumps, the half pipe, going upside down, and it's you constantly like changing. Right there. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's the stuff I used to, <laughs> used to do. And what, I mean, you've achieved a lot. So what is like, what's your career, most, your most proud achievement you've ever received? Well, winning the Olympics, obviously, is, you know, the top. Thank yes. you. Yes. Thank you. Um, you know, and that led me to so many amazing things, like uh -huh. hosting Saturday Night Live, et cetera. But I'm, I'm sort of most proud of the, when I got fourth place in the O2 Olympics, I, I brought this trick that no one had done, and it kind of moved my sport forward. It was a, it, even, though, even though I lost, I, you know, about two years before the Olympics, I had been developing this trick based on uh, my love for snowboarding and sort of new things. Mm -hmm. um, and so I created this trick called a dinner roll and I, I got that into the Olympics in 2002. Wow. And I wasn't able to win with it, which kind of hurt. I ended up fourth, <laughs> but, the follow, but, right. but the following year they changed all the rules to make my trick worth more points. And now if I look at the sport, that's kind of my legacy on the sport is that I changed. Because you changed the game is what you're saying. You changed yeah. the game. I'll change the game. I'll, I'll take yes. that. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. swag. That's yeah. what I call that. Yeah. Speaking of swag, I heard you, you brought me something. Absolutely. What you give so, me? Jim? Well, I was so impressed when you showed up in a one piece. I was like, I love one piece. My snow, I get so, another one. So I brought you a special tipsy this elf. This serious. <laughs> one piece. Wait, you got a show the back. Y'all see that, J.I.? Okay. Yeah, I just I just want to make sure that you come back to the slopes. I will. Okay. I will. I'm going to hold you to it, and I'm going to rock this and make you proud. Okay. I'm going to raise the game. Tell us, how are you feeling? Like, I, You know, I, I've never been this old before. <laughs> um, That's but, a blessing. You know, it's, it's great. You know, with first diagnosis, um, first brain tumor. You know, I had cancer in 97. Um, obviously, I got through that. Um, and then, um, yeah. Uh, about an overcomer. Yeah, I, I, I really just wanted to survive, you know. Right. So, um, and then uh, 2000, uh, 2004 was the first brain tumor, and it just ignited my faith. Mm. It just mm, was faith. one of those things I told my wife without skipping a beat. She just took my hands and started to pray, and it was the most powerful. I've had a lot of big moments. Yes. That was probably the biggest. And then they had to put a hole in my head to, to take a biopsy of it, and then they told me I was born with it, which is really wild. And then Four, six years later, it came back, and there was a surgery. It didn't go quite as planned. It turned into nine surgeries. And then six years later, there's a pattern emerging here. Mm. I came back again, and this time I just felt like uh, they're giving me a surgical option and a medical option. I was like, all I felt in the back of my head was get strong. That was it. Just get strong. And I had no idea what that meant. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, what do you want to do, surgery or medical option? I go... I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna get strong. And they go, what does that look like? And I said, I have no idea. Mm. I'm just feeling this. And so I didn't know if it was physical, emotional, intellectual, or spiritual. Mm -hmm. So I did what I did in high school because I negotiated my high school diploma. What do you do? You choose E, all of the above, and at least you'll be a little right. <laughs> so I've done that and I went in for the scan and they said, uh, you're gonna get good news. And I go, what is it? And they go, it didn't grow. I was like, okay. Went back again three months later, you're gonna get good news. What's that? It shrunk 45%. <laughs> and, and it was like, I said to the surgeon, I go, can you explain that? And he goes, God? God. I go, good enough for me? Yes. Good I got chills. This is a walking testimony. And then it shrunk again, and then it grew, and then it grew, and it shrunk, and it grew, and then COVID happened, and I got tired of fighting the medical system. Yes. So I just said, you know what? This thing doesn't exist. Mm. It's gone. It's so, um, yeah, so when, when, it, yes. when we started talking about it, you know, the 40th anniversary of the Olympic medal and everything and everything that's happened since, mm -hmm. it, it came up and it just became a story. And I got so much outreach and compassion. It was really wonderful. But it's eight years ago and I, I'm, I'm strong. Yes. Yeah. You're walking testimony. Yeah. And it seemed like you chose faith. 
You yeah. walk in by faith. Yeah. I've never been stronger in my faith. I've never been stronger emotionally or you know intellectually. I'm just I want to be interested in yeah. everything. Yeah. So it's just a way to live. It's you know, and if any of you guys are going through any of this stuff, just, Talk to I'm them. telling you, just just get strong. That's it. Get strong, get strong and just just pour yourselves into everything you can. And it's it, a quality of life comes up and then all the other stuff just sort of fades away. Fades away. Yeah. Yes. Y'all hear that? You're doing amazing things. Can you tell us about your foundation? Yes. Yeah, so I lost my mom uh, 47 years ago and she never had a chance. Mm. They gave her every chemo drug that you can imagine. She never had a chance. So when I lost her, I became a fundraiser. And then 20 years after I lost her, I was diagnosed with cancer and um, I became more of an activist because I realized it needed to be different. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't, wasn't, it wasn't right. And um, the, the reason I was able to survive was because two guys in Indiana were funded and were research scientists and figured out how to treat my cancer. But in that, I, I, I started a foundation called CARES, the Cancer Alliance for Research Education Survivorship. And in that, um, it's amazing that we've been able to fund research. We've been able, we created a mentorship program called Fourth Angel where we pair newly diagnosed patients with survivors. We created chemocare.com and now it's all about research. Mm -hmm. And our research is all about funding the future of cancer, which, which it, it's immunotherapy. Our bodies created the cancer. Let's teach our bodies how to detect and destroy it. So all we fund is immunotherapy and it's really amazing because on the night of my 40th anniversary, we announced that a um, research program that's for the same cancer that killed my mom is going into clinical trial. Wow. Oh, man, I know she's proud. You played for um, the Dream Team. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Which one was more nerve-wracking? <laughs> um, you know, when you think about playing with MJ, it's nerve-wracking because <laughs> he demands excellence. And, uh, but just getting him the basketball in the right place and let him do his thing with the tongue out and everything. <laughs> well, you know the tongue way out. <laughs> you know? And I tell you, we were practicing. So Coach Daly had that divided the team, East versus the West. So all the East players, Michael Jordan, Mike, uh, Pippen, Larry Bird, uh, Charles Barkley, Patrick Ewing, all the East guys uh -huh. versus the West guys, all my guys from the Western Conference. So Jennifer, it was a tight game. I and love then, tight and, games. Yeah, yeah, it uh -huh. was a tight game. Then we went up by about five or six points and they called timeout. So I went over to Michael Jordan. I said, man, if you don't turn into Air Jordan, we're going to blow y'all out. Like that. Uh -oh. so I was talking trash to him. <laughs> what did I do that for? Oh, <laughs> uh, He came out that huddle, and he must have scored eight, nine straight points, and he was always looking at me. He like, gave you, like... Mm. <laughs> See? Don't wake me up now. <laughs> you encouraged him a little too exactly. much. Exactly. A little too much. I talked trash a little too much <laughs> to him. And, uh, but it was a pleasure because it had been on my bucket list to play with him and Larry Bird. Mm. That was on my bucket list, and I got a chance to play with both on the Dream Team. We blew everybody out by probably over 42 points a game. And then the last thing I did, I played cards with Michael Jordan every single night. Really? Yeah, till 5 a.m. in the morning. Oh every my goodness. night. Every night. And yeah, we both lost a lot of money to each other. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my dream is to meet his mother. Oh, first class. Oh my goodness, First that would be a dream. And you know, she's uh, just a powerful, quiet presence. You know, yeah. she has that presence and powerful, but also sweet, sweet, just a, just a great person. And, and she's a blessing to others too. Yes. The foundation work and everything that Michael was able to do. She created it, built it, ran it, did a wonderful job. Mm. I love, I love just sitting here and from you about the greats and from a great, this is, this is gold, right y'all? It's golden. And I'm talking to a great. Oh, oh my God, yeah, thank so you. It's all good. You were just at the unveiling of the Kobe Bryant statue in mm -hmm. LA. What did that mean to you? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. thank you. Yeah. Um, Jennifer, it was, it was bittersweet. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Vanessa, his wife, did an amazing job with her speech and uh, also helped 
I think she designed it too, uh, the, his statue. Um, but I, we all miss him. Yes. And him not being there. Yeah. Uh, but what a, what a legacy he left. He's such an amazing young man and the things that he did for women's sports and the girl dad and yes. the championships that he won. Kobe was much more than just a, a dominant basketball player and a champion basketball player. And he meant so much to this city, Los Angeles, but also to the basketball world wor uh, worldwide. So, um, so, but the statue is the best statue I've ever seen. Yeah. So give Vanessa and Jeannie Buss a lot of credit, the Laker owner, because it was amazing. But we all just missed him and his presence. Uh, and so uh, thank you to everybody who have gone by and taking pictures with the statue and that are Kobe fans because mm -hmm. uh, the young man, there'll never be another Kobe Bryant. Never. You know, never. never. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to see you all come together to honor his legacy. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, he's going to, that Laker uh, mystique and he won one of those five championships and the way he did it was special probably the closest dude to Michael Jordan, mm. right? Because mm -hmm. Michael is the greatest that's ever played, but wow. he's yeah. Kobe in terms of yes. how he was able to, his mannerisms like Michael, the way he mm -hmm. approached the game like Michael, so. But wow. Special. It's very special. Mm -hmm. Thank you for speaking yeah. on that. Yeah. Okay, we gotta talk about this. This is a serious debate. Remember, this is a family show, okay? <laughs> is it, who's the GOAT? <laughs> Family show, LeBron uh, no, or I, MJ? Well, you got to put Kareem in there. Kareem? Yeah. Kareem? Yes. You got to put up. Kareem. Well, I think that's a really unfair question. And not, not from you, like, when guys try to talk about it. You have to go from generation to generation. I agree with that. Because um, I'm not going to disrespect uh, Kareem. Right. And I don't want to disrespect LeBron. Because LeBron is amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I played, I got drafted with Michael, played my entire career with Michael. Wow. He's the best I ever played against. Uh, I never got an opportunity to play against LeBron. You know, and I don't want to leave off Magic and Bird. Right. Yes. I mean, yeah. See, that's the response of a yeah. real GOAT hey, yourself. And, uh, I, and I apologize. I don't even want to leave off the late, great Kobe Bryant. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, yes. Because I've always said that the, the, the sec Michael's, in my opinion, then it's Kobe, then LeBron. But like I say, LeBron's, what he's accomplished is amazing. You're no known for being honest and just always truthful. Yes. Like, um, that's just amazing. So I got a few things I want to, <laughs> okay. I want to get you, you know, <laughs> you to just be Charles on us, okay? Got gotcha. you because his answers are hilarious. Don't you think so? I'm so fascinated. I don't know what to do. You ready? Yes. OK. Ooh, what's your go-to karaoke song? Oh, My Way by Frank Sinatra. Oh. I mean, I mean, Charles, you want to give us a line or two of it? Well, you have to be drunk and you have to have the words. <laughs> Nobody does karaoke sober. I, I mean, that's why you do karaoke. If you could actually sing, they'd be you. <laughs> like, I love, I love, like, <laughs> like, hey, seriously. You've been with friends, like, I'm great at karaoke. Like, first of all, you're not. Uh, <laughs> if, if you could actually sing, you'd be, like, getting paid to do it. You wouldn't be at a bar. OK, yeah. OK. See, you're amazing. What's the worst purchase you've ever made? A Porsche. Early in my career, I, you, car, cars are stupid. Oh. You don't waste money on cars. Oh. You don't, that's just stupid. I love a car. No, no, no. You don't waste money on cars. I'm listening. Uh, you know, I bought a, I actually bought two Porsches. <laughs> and then I realized that they make you go fast. <laughs> There's certain cars that you have to drive fast. OK. Yeah, so like now in my life, I have a Kia. Uh, what? It gets me from A to B. I'm just trying to get to A to B. Yeah. Very wise. Yeah. OK. Yeah. How do you feel about sharing food at dinner? I hate that. <laughs> I hate that more than anything in the world. Yeah, because they order crap that I don't want. <laughs> like, like, I, 
I, I know what I want to eat. I don't, so I want to eat what I want to eat. Uh -huh. You order what you want. Because if you like mine uh -oh. and I don't like yours, I'm getting screwed in that deal. <laughs> so I, I, don't, I don't share food. Okay. I do not share food. No, 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 you get what you want. I mean, we can share appetizers, <laughs> but my main course, I'm gonna get what I want because I know it's gonna be good. I don't know what your crap is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I gotta do one more because I love your responses. Yeah. Okay, um, who's your current man crush? Well, I just had to get rid of Tom Brady because he retired. Because, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, Tom Brady, I've got, who's a great person and obviously a great football player. I met him a couple times and I made the mistake of looking him in the eyes. <laughs> and once I looked him in the eyes, I don't remember anything he said after that. It was just like gibberish. <laughs> but, so, but now that he's retired, I had to get rid of him. And the next guy, and I haven't met this guy yet, but I do, Idris Elba. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna look him in the eyes. Yeah. I'm gonna look yeah. him in the eyes. He's the next guy, like, I got to meet that guy, because he looks so cool to hang out with and be around. <laughs> you know, so I, I, I really want He's to, next up. He's next up. OK. Yeah. How your sponsors, you know, react to you at being a mom? Yeah, um, when I was pregnant, I went through a really hard time. Um, I wasn't supported in the way that I hoped that I would have been. Mm -hmm. And um, my renegotiation contracts um, started off at 70% less than what I had been making before. And I was asking for maternal protection, so time to be able to recover after having a baby. And I ended up speaking on what was happening along with other teammates of mine. And I parted ways with the company that I was with. Wow. But um, after we spoke out, you know, they did change their policy. And, and things did become different. You see those bumps in the road to do it. Yeah. Tell everyone about your company. Um, so after I went through that whole ordeal, I was so frustrated because I felt like I had accomplished so many of my goals, but I still didn't have a footwear sponsor. And I was training for my fifth Olympics. And so my brother looked at me and he's like, well, what if we just did this ourselves? Mm. And I'm like, like create a shoe company? <laughs> and the more I sat with it, I was like, yes, like wow. we can create change ourselves instead of asking somebody else to do it. So we created Seish. <laughs> Uh -huh. So we created Seish, and it's a lifestyle brand for women, and our first product has been a lifestyle sneaker. And um, we make shoes that are designed to fit the form of the female foot. And yes. we learned that shoes haven't been made for women. Right. A shoe is made off of, alas, a mold that has been a mold of a man's foot to mm. make women's sneakers. So we thought that was crazy. Right. And so our shoes are different. They're designed for and by women, and I'm so excited to do that. Oh, I'm getting me some of them shoes. We already got some coming your way. Yes. Oh, I cannot wait. <laughs> of course. Um, what do you want little girls to take away from your story? I hope that they know that you know, they have to stand up for what they believe, mm -hmm. that nobody can put limits on them. They can do whatever, you know, they desire to. And you just got to be a fighter sometimes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wow. I, what, do you, what do you want your legacy to be? I really hope my legacy is one that I've helped women, you know, that I've advocated for them. I've really tried after becoming a mother, you know, to, to do more, to support more. So I know that women are capable. And just because we start families, that doesn't mean that, you know, that chapter yes. is over. And so, Thank you yeah. for that. You have a lot of titles. I was like, oh my God. I mean, you have a lot of titles. <laughs> I don't know. I think you might have more than me. I don't know. I was like, oh my God, look at this. That is amazing. <laughs> Congratulations thank on you. all your success and thank you for being here. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I heard you love the holidays just as much as me. I do. You do? I mean, my family is not as into it as I am. I may be a little over the top, but yeah. it's okay. A compromise. <laughs> the tree went up right after Thanksgiving, like the day after, like Immediately in yes. the car, go get it, and it's yes. up. But I had some lights on before Thanksgiving, so. <laughs> is this your tree? That is my tree in my onesie, yep. Uh. I love that. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you. We did a good job. My whole family actually uh, helped. I mean, not all of them helped, but they, they tried. So y'all like decorate all together? Yeah, it was a yeah. like, fun tradition. It's Like it's we were kids, but we're older. You're older. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about the holidays? Since it's cheery. It's cheery. And merry and joyful. Yeah. And forget all your problems for like a second. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love that. I love it because I'm the same way. Talk about the challenges you face with depression. 
Um, I mean, I think a lot of people didn't really understand the concept of, you know, how can you be an Olympic champion mm -hmm. and have depression? Um, I've been talking about it for like 10 years and, you know, Naomi Osaka and Simone Biles are all talking about it now. But back then it was like, well, that's impossible for you to have that, you know, and like they just didn't understand it. And um, it was hard to be at the top and then you go back to your hotel room and you're completely alone and it's very isolating actually. And um, I struggled with it since I was 18 years old and, um, you know, I've found ways to take care of myself. And I think that's also one thing that I found writing the book is, you know, different ways of understanding myself, taking care of right. myself. And I really believe that mental health is just as important as physical health. And they all I both have, love you saying they're all tied together. That is so important. So true. Um, talk about like having low self-esteem, because a lot of times I have to say that people do think when you can achieve so much and you're successful that you're not human, and this shows the human inside of someone. So, can you, hearing from someone like yourself on these things, I think, makes a huge impact and a difference. Well, I thank you, and I mean, I, again, I think sharing my story is just part of my process and my journey to be able to understand myself. But mm -hmm. you know, after I won the Olympics, you know, I always looked at my body as mm -hmm. you know a tool to be able to succeed and. Um, when I started to be invited to red carpets and talk shows, yeah. you always make, you make me feel good. Uh -huh. But you know, <laughs> being on the red carpet with people that are half my size was shocking. Uh -huh. And I felt for the first time that maybe I shouldn't look the way I do. And it really got in my head and yeah. I, I struggled with that for a long time, but I feel great now. I'm, you I look know. great. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you say that. It's funny you said that. I feel like I could relate to that in some way. Because I used to, you know, being in the industry, I'm a tall girl and I was a heavier girl and I would see people and I used to be like, I'm not too big, you too little. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what, you know, I like that's the fire. Yeah, at. that's what I would yeah. tell myself. Any reactions from your readers? And what do they have to say about your book? You know, I think honestly, people, I can relate to people not for my success on the slopes, but mm -hmm. for my injuries and my depression and all of the things that I've been through. So when I, it's so nice to be able to hear from fans, you know, because they all tell me how they, I inspired them to overcome their injuries or, you know, their adversities in life. And um, I mean, that's really why I wrote the book and that's why I have my foundation. You know, I, I want to share my stories to help others. Tell me about your challenges in dating. What's that about? Um, I mean, I talk a little bit about it in the book, but not very much. I think it's more a journey of myself and mm -hmm. what I need as a, as a person and as a woman. I think being an athlete and being ambitious and hardworking, it was challenging to always find someone that, you know, was kind of on the same level as me and right. actually wanted to encourage me instead of, you know, the opposite. Yes, I understand. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy now. And, uh, and yeah, I kind of, again, I think I, in my book, I really talk more about my journey, not the relationships, because I don't think all the relationships necessarily deserve any more paper. <laughs> she said what she said, baby. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit jenniferhudsonshow.com to see when you can watch four episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.